God, the most merciful, the most passionate parents, ladies and gentlemen, greetings all. In behalf of His Excellency Dr. Jamal San Basweidi, the Emirates Center for Strategic Research and Research Manager, I would like to welcome you all this evening with our lecture under the title, The Making of Terrorism and the Threat of Muslim Brotherhood and Hezbollah to the Region, presented by Mr. Muhammad Al Mullah, media professional and writer, State of Kuwait. Engineer Muhammad Al Mullah, a prominent media, um, ter he, he earned his bachelor's degree in Alexandria in uh, uh, mechanical engineering in Alexandria. He started his journalist uh, journey path in 2003 by writing in a zawiya, in a Shahid newspaper. He addressed the negative and positive aspects of life and economical situation. Engineer Amullah began his, he became he become the deputy of the TV and uh, building on his broad, broad experience in media journalism, Muhammad Amullah became the owner of media outlet D1 Amullah Network, which hosts political figures to discuss domestic and global issues, as well as covering daily political news and events on the network. Now it's my pleasure to welcome him to deliver his speech. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, before I start my lecture today, uh, my friends have asked me about my lecture, what is it about? I've chosen at the beginning to talk about the terrorism and the risk of the Muslim, uh, Muslim extremist group in our region. Why do we have to speak about this particular topic? Ladies and gentlemen, there are dreams to some to control this region, to control our region. There are dreams. It's not a new dreams. It's old dreams. Goes go go back to old centuries, ladies and gentlemen. When someone dreamt, Hassan al Banna dreamt. I don't want to go into details uh, because we have a very short period of time. Hassan al Banna didn't dream by himself. He dreamt with others. After the failure or the fall of the Uthman Empire, that to have an Islamic new regime, Islam that leads Muslims, and that was of one of the objectives he had in mind. So he found somebody in Hassan al-Banna, somebody from Egypt, he was eloquent, he was a speaker, and he could exploit the people he lived with, he capitalized on the change, the dynamic change that was in Egypt in the 1920s. Many, many simple people in Egypt start moving to Cairo and they start also to receive a lot of development and progress. So he exploited that particular spot and that's how he started the extremism. That's how he exploited religion. So he started to fight against modernism. Egypt was very modernized. Then he moved so that was the tar. I don't want to speak about Hassan al Banna. I don't want to speak about the founder of the Muslim Brotherhood. You could go back to the many books that talked about his personality. Ladies and gentlemen, now in the 30s, there the trend of Muslim Brotherhood changed. Now we can't call them Jama'a. Hassan al Banna was insisted till the last day that he is not a group. He was. He was to be he wanted to be called a movement of Muslim Brotherhood, not a group, Muslim Brotherhood. He insisted on the fact that the name should be changed to movement as opposed to uh, a group. That period of time, when the change took place, he started fighting and he started to fight the change, the radical, the, the modernity in Egypt, he, exploiting also people when they go to mosque, and he ex exploited simple people in the countryside. And he spread his ideology in schools and different aspects of life in the Egyptian society. And we witnessed 
we witnessed a, a change from the closed mentality to the open mentality. We, at the beginning, he was very close to the British. Now he moved to then he moved to Germans, then. And we let's not forget the Egyptian journalist who gave him some money. So to promote the notion that Muslims are alongside the German, so he we moved to another period of time. The, so he became open. He moved, Hassan al-Banna, the founder of Muslim Brotherhood, he's become open and he's tried to prove his existence and his, his status. So why is it that particular period, which is the 30s, took many changes took place. Hassan al-Banna was looking for people, smart people. He was looking for people, distinguished people, people who could who could build up a base, a foundation for his movement. He started to establish seminars or, or conferences. He would have a platform to choose people to speak on his, to whatever they talk about. Dr. Muhammad? So somebody, I need to point out this, I need to share this story so we can understand the change that the movement took place and the, understand the changes that took place all over the world and the impact it had on the Muslim Brotherhood. Those, those movements changed Islam and they become a single voice eating other Muslim, other groups. They dominated the market, they dominated the, the, the arena and that was their goal and target. That time we were very simple people and the exploitation, the exploitation of a religion we witnessed by Muslim Brotherhood. Hassan al-Banna was looking for the good speakers, eloquent speaker, not for religious people. If you go back, the Muslim Brotherhood members, they, they, they don't know much about religion, but they focus on a very good speakers, eloquent speakers, and people who don't have faith or integrity. Now, Muslim Brotherhoods, they have become businessmen, they become rich, they turn from um, Islamic, uh, uh, from Islam to business. Muslim, Hassan al-Banna at the beginning was looking for smart people, for intelligent people. Now on the platform, there was a young man, a young man, 14 years, still teenager, went up to the platform, He went up to the platform and delivered the speech that Hassan al-Banna said about that speech. So he asked, why it took you too long? Hassan al-Banna was very impressed by this young, Sayyid Ramadan, this is the young man. Muslim Brotherhood mentality has spread and incorporated and included many people today Yusuf Nada and Hindu Suri, we will speak about them today. So this young man went up to the stage and he talked. He was very eloquent. Hassan Banna said, why took you too long? Come join us. You are very eloquent. Your role, the first point here, your role is with young people. Your role is to get people together to invite everybody from all over the Egypt and establish meeting and hold up meetings and demonstration and get together all that. And he was opposing to the uh, UK. And uh, remember, the best people to capitalize on banners are Muslim Brotherhoods because they are all good speakers. They are very fascinating speakers. You would sit and listen to them and you'll be really impressed by the way they speak and how eloquent they are. And, but if you go through what they say, what the words, they, there is no substance. They just exploit you. They brainwash the young people so you can become uh, a tool to implement their agenda. Has Saeed Ramadan started taking care of young people and he started to venture into the political arena and he started also uh, uh, inviting young people. When he was gradu graduated from Sharia University, he was a lawyer, an advocate. He became ad advocate. When he became advocate, 
he was a very diligent. He became the secretary of Hassan al-Banna. The Egyptian government started fighting Muslim Brotherhood mentality, so and so on. So in 1984, moved to Pakistan, and then, then he was assassinated at the same year. So the, he started move, the, leading the movement. Said Ramadan, at that age, he occupied status, very high status. You know Muslim Brotherhood were secret job. They're undercover. They are work underground. Their job is to work underground. This is their, this underground activities were known, were known by nobody but except them. And they had very secret agents. They had the first line and the second line. And Said Ramadan was the minister of the Ministry of Foreigner of for Muslim Brotherhood. They, he was chosen and they then become the finance minister and he become the leader of Muslim Brotherhood. He became a, he became a fighter. He became a fight. He became a murderer and killer to kill innocent people. That's what happened to what happened in, in the U.S. in in 19 and 18. Said Ramadan moved to Amin Husseini at that time. Mufti of Al Guds. Amin Husseini, his story has a big story. Many people might disagree with me. Who is Amin Husseini? One day, we today we will one day I will talk about Amin Husseini, how he managed to mislead many people. This Amin Husseini, he was fighting against socialism, although he was he was fighting socialism, however, he was defending his own personal interests. So Amin Husseini had this meeting with Said Ramadan. So the Fat Mufti of Al Ghudis, Amin Husseini, met Said Ramadan. So why Said Ramadan took interest in Amin Husseini? This is the reason. Amin Husseini had good relationship with Europe and the US. Said Ramadan was disowned till he got the Jordanian passport. First he had a Pakistani passport, then he got the uh, Jordanian passport. But he focused on Amin Husseini because so he will be its access, his access to go to the U.S. So to move on to a new stage of developing the Muslim Brotherhood. So Said Husseini met Amin Husseini, Said Ramadan met Amin Husseini, and they had a meet, a conference. If you want to move to another country, you have to have an, uh, an organization. This information is quite huge. I'm trying to give it to you in a nutshell. To move to another country, this, they have to start with a conference. The conference was, a Muslim conference, was to invite all Muslims. But in fact, he had a secret agenda to utilize that conference so, as access to Europe and the US, particularly in the 50s and at the time of the Cold War between the US and the US, Russia. In 51, we had the first meeting of the Muslim conference in Pakistan, and Ramadan was elected to a representative of the the community and he was his first step to move to the international stage, particularly to the US. In 53, 1953, we had another meeting, another conference. So what is the more most more important? The the Genev Genev in in Switzerland in Switzerland in Switzerland he had a, a, a meeting in, in Genev in Europe and he started addressing different issues. And in 1953, he traveled to the US and he, had a, he met with American politicians and started working in a different arena and different lines of business. The issue I'm talking about now and the, the, the aim, the goal to share with you who is Said Ramadan Said Ramadan, when he was Geneva, his target to, to, so, to make Muslim Brotherhood representatives of Islam. 
he became known through a Muslim community in Nemsa in, 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 in the Muslim communities that live in Europe decided to build um, a mosque in German, Munich. So he, mo he went Saad Ramadan to establish and build that mosque. And he was accompanied by a Syrian Mus a member of Muslim Brotherhood named, and they went there and they started building the mosque. So the meeting in Germany just wanted to collect to collect funds for to build the mosque. Said Ramadan, without mentioning the countries that funded that mosque, we are it's very sensitive issue to mention countries and to uh, hold them responsible and accountable for the historical uh, events. So they needed one thousand five hundred franc. Said Ramadan, who was refugee in in in, uh, in Germany. Nobody bothered to ask and question how, how he managed to find that money. Nobody but asked to, to question how he managed to find the funding. There are many mistakes and blunders that we made because we had disagreement and each one of us was trying to be the leader. We never had a cooperation. 1,000 franc. So, so nobody questions that. Nobody questions the funding. Said Ramadan, united the students of Muslims, and he launched in Germany. He, he he called them the Muslim community or the Muslim committee to unite. You need the Muslim committee, unite the students so to become one world. So the Muslim Brotherhood will represent Islam. He managed, as a result of the different uh, Muslim sectarian or Muslim fight between the Muslim groups. So the Muslim Brotherhood had a, a big victory and they managed to establish the mosque and that mosque was the center for Muslim Brotherhood. That mosque was built by Muslims, was built by um, Muslim businessmen and Muslim countries by the Gulf countries money built that mosque to reserve the move the Muslim Brotherhood movement and today and we complain because they are complaining against our safety and security we are the one who built their mosque in Germany we still till today make a mistake and today we say we have many Muslim community communities in in, in uh, Europe and they do not they have nothing to do with the Muslim Brotherhood those people they show compassion the Muslim Brotherhood they throw compassion but in fact, they have a secret agenda. They want to build their own secret underground committee to build their own targets. They are on, only guerrillas. They are guerrillas just only to serve the purpose of whoever pays for them. During that period of time, Said Ramadan, I will share with you a story. Said Ramadan, that guerrilla, he start moving, he left the mosque of German in Munich and uh, in 80, 79 or 80, that's the time when the uh, Iranian revolution, Al Khomeini was considered as a, a reformer and he, he, there was a queue in, Ger in Iran against the, gov uh, the government Khomeini made that cue to give everybody a hope. There was somebody called Ali Tabtabati. He was he was opposing Al Khomeini. He Ali Tabtabati was in the U.S. Saad Ramadan sent an Egyptian guy to the U, to the U.S. under the name of another country. He asked him to go to Washington. There is Ali Tabtabatai tries to uh, manage or, long, uh, or do, uh, organize a demonstration in the U.S. At the Carter time, or at the Carter era, there was a hesitation whether or not to support or not support Khomeini or the coup, or the coup in the era, Iran. So this particular guy went to the U.S. to Ali Tabtabatai 
the descent, the descent uh, of the Iranian um, regime, and the story was revealed in every box how he managed to assassin Ali Tatubai in the U.S. while he was in Germany. So Ali Ramadan, uh, Said Ramadan was in Germany, but he managed to manage the assassination process in the U.S. and his many his branches, his influence in everywhere. We know what Muslim Brotherhood do. We, however, there are some countries don't want to take action against um, against Muslim Brotherhood out fair to Muslim Brotherhood. Muslim Brotherhood movement is a big topic. However, Said Ramadan, there was a, a person called Yusuf Nada. He wasn't, this guy wasn't with uh, Muslim Brotherhood, but he had a very good uh, business relationship and he was materialist. And he's a man who, who is very sophisticated. He traveled overseas and he met Muslim Brotherhood, made business with Muslim Brotherhood. He was, he get to a point to a status where he become Yusuf Nada, the finance of finance, uh, the minister of finance, he had relationship. Yusuf Nada had relationship with Libya, with Muslim, with the GC countries. He had relationships with everywhere. He managed to utilize that relationship, that network. He completed and achieved many achievements. With Yusuf Nada. We had also Yusuf Garadawi, one of the leaders of Muslim Brotherhood. It's a long story, and there are many countries involved here. I don't, but I will tell you. This Said Ramadan is our example. The change that took place, how smart they are. The foundation of fighting Muslim Brotherhood. It's a terrorist group. They chose the competent people. They chose the people who have loyal to them, to their country. If you can create a generation, honest, loyal, no matter how big countries pays to this movement, no matter how other, no matter what they do, no matter how conspired people, as long as we have awareness in our generation, uh, awareness about how risky those Muslim extremists. Our frontier is the most important thing, is the education and fighting those extremist group at their, uh, at their home in UAE. In a conference, in Mecca conference, in Mecca, in first Mecca, there was a war to change the religious rhetoric or the religious narrative. We would sit in the mosque, we would, we would listen. We would pray to God to kill infidels. We say yes, we, we say amen. We, we want all our prayers to be fulfilled, to be answered, but we cannot. We cannot to change unless we ourselves change. We cannot achieve a change unless we start by ourselves. Our religious narrative or rhetoric should change. If we go to Muslim communities in Europe and the US and go to the uh, students' union and we explain to people and societies and universities that those people do not represent Muslim. Those, there are Muslim communities do not have money, do not have the uh, abilities to, to speak. Muslim Brotherhood, they have the media, they have the men. They went deep into the foreign governments. Even Western countries were uh, infiltrated by Muslim Brotherhood. We still have the style, the embassy, the diplomatic, and the, and the embassy. Our society should move. Our leaders should move. The Muslim, the honest leaders to, should to change the world and to inform everybody and to inform the decision makers that those Muslim Brotherhood and whoever supports them are terrorists, the true terrorists, who, who want to manufacture, um, who want to manufacture the conflicts. So we can have a conflict between us and those countries so they can just sit and watch to create a conflict for them to eliminate our religion and our tolerance. 
this is the summary. This is, I give it to you in a nutshell, supporting Muslim Brotherhood, they support Iran. Why? Iran supported, in, sub, Iran supported 19 million for, to uh, Muslim Brotherhood in the Egypt. So Iran would pay, Iran would pay Muslim Brotherhood. Muslim Brotherhood uh, movement, it's a big topic. We cannot cover it in 15 minutes. We need the honest and credible communities, you, I want the audience to move on. I want you to face them. We are religious people, we are Muslims. We don't want to have conflicts with other countries. Why do you force me to wage a war against others? The, this creates those um, media personalities so others will have this kind of mindset and mentality. We talk about manufacturing of terrorism and the risk of uh, uh, Muslim Brotherhood and Hezbollah in this region. Do you think religious uh, movements are imposed upon us? Uh, is it imposed or not? Nobody's imposed on you anything. You as a society, you've accepted them. I don't blame societies. I blame, I blame who? I blame the decision maker. Those people who you thought that the solution to get to the others is through those religious groups. And in the past, we were deluded. We couldn't see. We didn't have a proper media campaign. We didn't face them. Let me, in my own generation, at my own time, I would say one trend that religion is with Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood represent us because they were powerful. Therefore, I thought we imposed them, we created them, we financed them. Do not forget that Muslim Brotherhood still dream. The Al Khomeini uh, revolution in Iran, I think there is a control by Iran and also Muslim Brotherhood control. And they all meet, they have agreement. There is, there is agreement with Muslim Brotherhood in Iran. Therefore, the dream of Ikhwan is that Egypt will be the leader of the, the capital of to, to launch Muslim Brotherhood mindset, to steal your uh, wealth and to establish the empire of Muslim Brotherhood and Iran to can extend from Iraq to Syria. And Al-Houthi is in Yemen, and it's mentality in Yemen. There are, there, there is a, a plan to have Egypt to Morocco, Muslim Brotherhood. Those movements and groups have dreams, have agenda. There are people who give up and bow to the, to Muslim Brotherhood out of fear, not to be out of fear, because at some point, some governments if they don't have confidence and trust in their people and confidence and trust in the loyalty of their people, they bow and they give up and they bow to the Muslim Brotherhood. And therefore, Muslim Brotherhood become decision makers. And no countries, countries have become weak and they can no longer resist and, and fight and stand against Muslim Brotherhood. Both, both have men, have dreams. Everyone has a dream. These two guys, each one have a dream. Which, which dream you want? This one has a dream. Khomeini came to support the relationship between Muslim Brotherhood. From the days of Nawab Safawi, Nawab Safawi met Sayyid Qutb and they met in 1953, and they started discussing the mentality and the mindset of Muslim Brotherhood. There was similarity between those guys' mindset. They met on the goals, they had shared the same goals. Therefore, the Noah Sohoi, when he met at the time, 
he he translated many people trans, Ali Khamenei translated the Sayyid Qutb books in the sixties. Ali Khamenei translated Sayyid God, Sayyid God, who who accused you of being ignorant. Sayyid God, who who said God thought that society that they don't uh, are not controlled by Muslim Brotherhood are con considered ignorant. Who is more dangerous? Sayyid God, he he uh, ordered the killing and murdering of innocent people. He confirmed, Sayyid God, he said, if there is no control by Muslim Brotherhood, if there are no leader of by Muslim Brotherhood, Sayyid God said that people can be killed and slaughtered. This is Sayyid God. Those said God, he was glorified. This is how they glorify their leaders. Al Khomeini, the same thing, was praising Hassan al-Banna, and he considers him as a, a source of inspiration. The, the banner is Islam is the solution. The same banner, Al Khomeini used the same logo. They were co helping each other. So that man, both Hassan al-Banna and Khomeini, they both have a different dreams. A dream to, uh, to control and occupy our land. If we talk about terrorism, what do you guys talk about terrorism? It's killing and slaughtering, controlling countries. Don't tell me that there are there was no country there is no countries that have given up for to the Muslim Brotherhood. There are indeed countries that supported the Muslim Brotherhood. So some countries think that Muslim Brotherhood movement can be a tool to its victory and to achieve his success and, and maintain his status and maintain his power. But that is a mistake because Muslim Brotherhood, they fight against whoever supported them. Terrorism is a tool used to achieve our goals, particularly in the extremism, extremist Muslim, uh, in religious extremism. How can we, how can we deal with terrorism? By eliminating the, uh, the resource fighting poverty and opening doors for investment. The most dangerous aspect is the media terrorism. What do you, it's the media terrorism, Muslim Brotherhood and other uh, religious groups have chosen some uh, eloquent speakers like uh, different people and through this TV stations, we m managed to create stars. If we create stars today, like today we have uh, social media stars, they will generate lots of millions of money. Uh, the, the people with vision, the people who have vision, who are smart, they have very small income. Might his salary might be ten thousand or five thousand. However, they created the media terrorism and created personalities that lead this region to to for to their to for their own interests, and they fo they fooled young people. And this is the most dangerous aspect. But this is not my decision. The decision with the governments. The governments should chose to manufacture young people smart, intelligent. The media is a manufacturing, is an industry, and I think the Arabic Spring was based on media. The strategical goals for uh, uh, media terrorism is supporting religious scholar and famous, as you can see in our social media, they have a meeting like this media that our governments are a complete failure, that we have to change the regime and we have to change the tyrant, we have to kill the tyrants. This is their narrative, their, this is the, their speech. This is their speech, regime. Many words, many vocabularies. When they fight, they create those narrative, they, they spread negativity, that, I don't claim that there are no negativities or there are no negative aspects of our government, but what I am saying, let's highlight the positivity. 
the most dangerous thing is when you emphasize, highlight the negativity in our life. <coughs> the most important aspect is recruiting young people from clubs and universities. In Turkey, for instance, one of the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, Muslim Brotherhood leaders in from Kuwait, he is on Facebook. He is invited some Muslim Brotherhood and he recruited many, many people in Kuwait and all the region. And the course is $1,000, $1,500, uh, $1,200. He, someone says, I never paid $1,200 for my son to be recruited. So he would they say, send your kid to uh, Turkey to have fun. They started by the football activities, and the course is manuf uh, manufacturing leaders. Yes, the course in Turkey was the course was manufacturing leaders. Those courses there in in, in Turkey, and the, it costs one thousand two hundred. And you can find it in Facebook. Uh, Facebook, if you f write the name. So the change academy hasn't is not over. Our Muslim our problem with Muslim Brotherhood. Muslim Brotherhood, they don't understand, they don't trust that Muslim Brotherhood are terrorist group. Uh, they are terrorists. So I need to remind you of one point. Do you remember ISIS members? The percentage of Tunisian people, the percentage of Tunisian people from, that move from Tunis to ISIS and who manufactured them. If you remember before the Arabic Spring, any uh, one of the religious uh, scholar in Kuwait he, by sheer coincidence, I would watch the TV. I, it, I, I learned about that by a TV, how one Kuwaiti Sheikh uh, traveled in, a, in, in, in Tunis and ISIS flags was on the uh, Kuwaiti Sheikh. There are many people. I found people from Kuwait, from Saudi, from Egypt, from different countries of the world. They were walking, walking walk with the flags of Daesh. You can write so and so in Tunis. And you will have this amazing and, 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 and this wonderful speeches. Terrorists is an international uh, industry that we have to be uh, vigilant today. We have to be vigilant of some terrorist group that recruit our young people to become a tool to uh, quote explosion and frustration. Muslim Brotherhood, we talked about it at the beginning. Muslim Brotherhood, as I confirm one point, that they have structure, they have underground structure in each and every country. Do not think that you are safe and secure, to, uh, secure. and you think that you have applied the law. There is also the fifth line, the fifth line. How can you know? We will talk about it now. The donors, the donations uh, that they utilize, all their job is underground. And they are the best people to work underground. All their activities underground, their meetings underground. And the, uh, also the meeting, the pilgrim, in the pilgrimage. They have annual meetings in the pilgrimage and they have hold meetings and they decide and they set up a, a document for their strategical plan in Mecca, at, also in pilgrimage. And who started that? It started in Sayyid Ramadan. And they're still going, they're still doing the same. Mr. Brotherhood, they improve, they develop. They recruited new uh, recruits. We talked about this, but I'll share with you one very important uh, story. Muslim Brotherhood, I wouldn't call them phobia, they are businessmen, they become businessmen. Can you imagine, in Egypt, only in Egypt, there are 500,000 members registered. Their memberships is monthly. Nobody could list their lists and groceries and shop and organization and financial, financial uh, cooperation, how many companies, many companies fund the activities, 
of Muslim Brotherhood. The money, the money, they, they receive money from countries. They're charitable organization. They have, let me tell you, in, in, in general, in, in slang, we always donate for building mosques and donate for uh, orphanage and donate for digging wells, all that. That money that we donated, that we gave, that money, had it been directed to Muslims, then we would never had a single poor Muslim in, 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 poor in Africa. Were, were, were that too much money that we donated? Those money collected by Muslim Brotherhood, they had a network, a network that we cannot detect, huge amount of money. They are rich, they no doubt. They, not only that, I was with Dr. Muhammad, the word halal, for instance. What is halal? If you go back in time, I start thinking. I, I, I want to know more information about halal. Today, any uh, food product, chicken, you, go, you, you have this stamp on halal. Did, have you ever asked whoever authorized this brand who ever authorized this brand? Who gave them the authority? Who gave them this document? And how much does it cost? Is it um, halal in, in the food products only? We can talk about halal. Now in everything halal, even in, tur in tur uh, tourism, even the makeup as tourism, the, the lipstick is, is halal. Uh, get get the authority, get the certificate, and pay for the halal certificate. It's all all this money goes to Muslim Brotherhood, and we are the one who pay. Tourism under halal. Unless because we have among the audience we have ladies, there are disgraceful things that took place. Be, months a few months back, I was in Jordan with Marzouk Al Ghanem. I was distributing uh, assistance by the um, Red Crescent. One of the sisters, I felt that she asked for some help. I was, as a journalist, I wanted to have a, a chat with her. I asked her, don't you think the, they don't give you money? They give us a little. I told, I told her the countries, they send money to you. The, in, some, in a nutshell, even the body has become halal with the, the religious scholars. I'm not gonna elaborate on this, but our religion has been exploited. Our religion has been capitalized. We donate refugees, but they took advantage of those refugees who collect the don donations. This is one, one of the, the last piece of information. Said Ramadan, that this person, he worked in Switzerland and he founded the Islamic Center in Europe. And there were many companies that he established in Europe and the, their capital exceeded million, 100 million and these stats could be all that have been there for many years. Now we talk about billions of dollars that they, they have in their uh, safe. This is an indication of how dangerous they are. In UK, for instance, we've got 13, they have, um, Muslim Brotherhood have more than 13 companies in UK. And they claim they are prosecuted they always, Muslim Brotherhood always claim that they are persecuted in UK, but they own the most luxurious cars and the most luxurious villas. We talk about the Muslim Brotherhood and their existence in the US. Uh, Said Ramadan is the first one to establish the underground system and how utilize and exploit their existence in Europe. The uh, the Jewish writer has 
recommended that the U.S. and the European to support the Muslim Brotherhood planning and agenda. In in sixty three, Muslim Brotherhood went to the U.S. to found to found and to establish the International Muslim Students Community. And there were many branches for that organization that established in the different states. In 1903, the uh, Muslim American Society est established uh, branches all over. And also, Obama administration considered uh, Muslim Brotherhood uh, as a, a, a terrorist group. Our brothers or friends in Suede, the recruitment uh, of young people in Suede. Shakib Min Makhlouf, he was a broken who was working in Suede and he was recruiting Muslim Brotherhood. And a Suede government arrested that person in suspicion of recruiting young people for Muslim Brotherhood. And the CIA was also uh, tracking down Muslim Brotherhood and revealed some of their activities and revealed their plan to radicalize young people. Muslim Brotherhood always worked in the shadow. The Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard. And what, what do you know about Re Iranian Revolutionary Guards? The Iranian Re Revolutionary Guards or the Al Khomeini. Al Khomeini had a new principle. He, he is he was very close to Muslim Brotherhood, and we talked about the relationship with the Khan. Khomeini had a dream, different dream, and they were complement each other. So Hassan al Banna and Al Khomeini they were complement each other. He has a dream. He had a dream that he would control our Arab world. So there was a, a fighting and proxy. He founded many committees in Hijaz, in 53, in Hezbollah. So he came up with an um, um, ideology. In, 70, in 79, there was a new organization that was founded, founded as per orders by Al Khomeini. Al Khomeini he said that there is no government unless we have the internal security guards. So we protect ourselves internally, then we move to external uh, aspects. The uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guards controlled the internal and also started expanding all, all over the region. The risk and danger, the, the risk of uh, uh, Iranian revolutionary uh, uh, guards to eliminate dissents and to prepare, and the revolutionary uh, Iranian revolutionary guards had many activities and achieved many achievements, and their activities in in, in Hijaz and Saudi Arabia, and the Iranian political parties in Gulf, there are many. The um, Iranian political um, parties in, in many different uh, GCC countries. The most dangerous one is in Iran. In Iraq, Al Hashd al Shabi political party. Al Hashd al Shabi party, any peace goes to Iraq, the Hashd al Shabi has to have a, a tax, not only not the U UK government. And whoever looks at it, and this is piece of information has been confirmed by Iraqi people that. Al Hajj al Shabi party takes uh, a tax for each, any item, any product that comes or goes to Iraq. Al Khomeini and Hassan al Banna, the relationship is very ultimate. Al Khomeini never forget the favors Hassan al Banna. Al Khomeini confirmed that he was inspired by Hassan al Banna. The Muslim Brotherhood channels in Turkey. The speech of Muslim Brotherhood. This is a Mujtama uh, magazine quote. All you Muslim leaders, look at the how they draft their speech. 
the government leaders they are busy with the the creating divisions uh, and they always attack the muslim uh, leaders and this is one of the, the their messages that some some of you deny the exist the the message of muslim brotherhood and it says those leaders who still take the money of arab and muslim to to kill the uh, or to fight the uh, Suhyuni when, when at some point Ayatollah Kashani he could have been the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood movement Sayyid Qut the, gig, the gigantic leader of the Muslim uh, mentality hypocrisy leader a meeting uh, with the say say it got inside the prison Muslim Brotherhood was preparing for a civil war in Egypt this is my uh, this is my uh, well that it, this is the Al Mustama magazine glorifying le the leadership Muslim Brotherhood glorifies Khomeini reconcile between both of them so why can't we reconcile between these two guys Muslim Brotherhood in, in the world they issue a statement that Al Khomeini meets the Muslim the Muslim uh, movement leader Muslim leaders a continuous attack on the Arabic leaders and they warn Arabic leaders the continuous struggle for the misled currents of the Muslim leader Sayyid God he always calls on calls for establishing the shadow government listen to this speech I I know some of the Muslim Muslim Brotherhood leaders I know there is a basic role that's within the Muslim Brotherhood that there is an organization and there is a mentality and there is a, an ideology if we allow the uh, movement to control the mindset we we become followers we are not leaders but there is ideology and there is an organization and there is an, a view and there is an organization there is a, a view a point of view organization and the movement we need to distinguish between these three there is an organization and there is movement and he admitted that he is a member of Muslim Brotherhood the complete revolution is the one that we eliminate the previous regime with all of, from media justice Le uh, this is what happened in Libya for instance this is a complete revolution this hope will expand all over the country especially particularly the Gulf what happened well, even though people call it uh, Arabian Spring it's just a uh, metaphor as a spring but the bright description is a, a successor because in the Dawah uh, is a copy of Muslim Brotherhood they call the 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 books of uh, Hassan al-Banna Said Hawa they have nothing to do with Shia they are Shia those are from Shia but there's this speech is no different than from Dawah to Muslim Brotherhood. Those chanting people. That this demonstration took place in Kuwait. It was it was Kentucky must in Egypt, and it's the same chanting. <laughs> Thank you.
the same root trick, the same chanting. The people want to fail or to fall the juristic, juristic system. We need to call others to join us and we have to also to call individuals. Each one, each one of us has to call to individual people. Everybody should be held accountable. Everybody should choose three, to choose five or four people to practice the individual da'wah and what should be said in each and every stage. And, and when there is a meeting, each one should call people that they know. Calmly, gently, everybody should call everybody to join our da'wah. If everybody, everybody does his job in individually, by the end of the year, each stage is a step to the second step. So we cannot overstep other step unless I complete the first stage. Until I make sure that the people that I'm talking with are convinced by my message. If I rush, so people will start speculating. If whoever, whoever refuses to join us, whoever refuses to be recruited with us, Albanna said individual home and society. We know the individual and the home. When the home embraces Islam, Islam is, dominates the life because our offspring will be, so, will be soft. When our children grow in an Islamic climate, but if the climate or the environment is Islamic, the, our offspring might be misled. Hassel Banna said, emphasize the importance of uh, the environment, the Islamic environment. We cannot convert everybody to our Muslim Brotherhood. However, what we can convert as many as possible to become true Muslims and to join our movement. This is the role of the society where, where the Muslim will be applied. The recruitment has a different method and the media ha has a different method. Whether we call in mosques or, or communities or syndicates or clubs or councils, parents' councils, all those aspects we need to penetrate and infiltrate, infiltrate all that. If they close something, we find another thing. We can go through any hall, anywhere. Had far reaching consequences. There was an influx of them here. Did they work? They worked in the education and in other professional works, and uh, that's when the problem started here. Many of today's Saudi radicals studied under Egyptian and Syrian fundamentalists. They misused their hospitality. They dealt with, we dealt with them honestly, and they, and they dealt with, that un, un, with us under, underhandedly. And uh, that is a mistake that's not going to be repeated. This is... Give me the first photo. This is drink, drink, this is Muslim. So the photo, this is the photo. Give me other evidence. This is the Jordan, the Muslim Brotherhood representative in Jordan. One of the delegates, they call them the blessed delegates to the win, the victory of Iranian revolution in Tehran. And this was a support by Muslim Brotherhood a, a complete uh, support. This is one Muslim Brotherhood in Jordan. Give me that se the second photo. This is the guy, the Al Murshid or the guide of uh, Muslim Brotherhood. Having uh, Tel Misani says, when Al Khomeini established the started the revolution, we supported him. Okay. This is Rashid Gnoushi from Tunisia. And with other representative of Muslim this is the Muslim Brotherhood in Lebanon. Fathiyakin. See what he says. By the revolution, uh, Iranian revolution, we achieved what God promised us. Who are these two guys? Who are those? Yusuf Nada. 
Yusuf Nada, the delegates of the representative of Muslim Brotherhood with a secret meeting with Erdogan, the president of the Jordan, who, who are supported. This is a photo that the uh, leader of the Muslim Brotherhood in Saudi Arabia. This is Al Jazeera presenter, Ahmed Mansour. Those are the Muslim Brotherhood. And the this is their planning and scheming to control the Arabic and the Muslim land. And Terrorism and extra terrorism. We have to look for our roots. The roots that that cost us modern, modern, uh, moderation. So uh, the extremism replaced moder moderation. Your conference will sign a document. We all of us. We should be held accountable that transform this document to a pro uh, practical um, and initiatives to change the current culture in our society. We rebuild our curriculum and syllabus and re uh, rebuild also our religious rhetoric and reconsider everything. I hope that every one of us be responsible to, to, to our own honorary to, to serve this document and make it a, a, a method, a method through which he works in the family, wherever he goes, to spread this mentality and spread this narrative so we all can come to consensus, consensus about this issue. The last video, and we will wrap up with the last video. This is the video. This video. Those, those Muslim Brotherhood fa fa dancing. Who do you think who f who who faced those hooligans? They were faced. Who faced them? A, a Kuwaiti family. Only seven or eight people. They raised the flag of Kuwait and they were chatting, long live the prince. Is they are a one single Kuwaiti family faced 50,000 dem uh, demonstrators. <laughs> And this is the one who is running away from leadership. I try to give it to you in a nutshell. I try to summarize it. I just have a message to you. I would like to thank you that you've listened to me for an, over an hour. I've exceeded the time. It's a big topic. The solution is up to you. I, I tried my best. Is the war is over with Muslim Brotherhood? Is the risk of uh, uh, Muslim Brotherhood? I don't think so. We live in a very volatile, volatile region. We have many wars in this region. I hope that our victory will be on our side. We will certainly be the winner. And I hope that we will eliminate the source of terrorism. Thanks for Muhammad Al Mullah for this um, uh, very valuable lecture. And now I would like to open the floor to our, uh, our audience to question kindly. Whoever wishes to ask a question, stand up and ask a very brief question. Greetings, everybody. Thanks for, uh, to, for to you, to the, to, for the presentation, uh, the facts that you've presented. And you, you were bold and uh, courageous and audacious. Unfortunately, many people, the scholars or leaders of Muslim, nobody dared to reveal 
the facts. Nobody made an announcement about, from any Muslim countries about the truth of Muslim Brotherhood and the, the truth of blending and the process of impersonalization. We trusted them because they pretended to become, uh, to be good people. But there was like trade of places or Muslim, they, they pretended to be uh, the followers of the Prophet Muhammad. So many people were fascinated, were bewitched by them. Many Muslims were by, be, bewitched by Muslim Brotherhood. When you talk about Muslim Brotherhood, the, the Islam is solution is the solution. It means the Muslim Brotherhood is a solution. Islam has nothing to do with them. Islam has nothing to do with any political movement. There, there has never been a political movement throughout the Muslim uh, history. And there is a agreement, although they disagree, but they have all the same goal, the same objective. Therefore, they distribute roles that Hassan al-Banna represent Abu Bakr Sadiq and so and so represent so and so. Kindly, kindly, kindly your question. Whoever disagrees with them is considered a disbeliever. Why can't we have a reference? Why can't we have authority or a reference that works diligently against those movements, the political, whether it's IS, IS or, or, or Muslim Brotherhood? In each every country, there is the Minister of Religious Affairs. Unfortunately, most of the most of the religious affairs are controlled by Muslim Brotherhood. Any other question? Dr. Mandar Afifi, uh, thanks for the presentation that you explained the mentality of the mindset of Muslim Brotherhood and some of their personalities. This is the found at that state at this foundation. Muslim Brotherhood are no is no longer using the pen and they using blood and weapon. Ten days ago, their whip armies was about to control Aden, and you've presented a, a single Kuwaiti family, one tribe from north, Yafa tribe, fought and fought against Muslim Brotherhood. We have not, we shouldn't deal with them as religious leaders. They use Islam and we say Islam. We should create new tools to fight them. We need to create, we should distance ourselves from the religious rhetoric and start with the national rhetoric, a, rit, a, a rhetoric that distance ourselves from Muslim Brotherhood because they are, they, they came out from mosques. They are the, the foundation of terrorism, we should pursue and should let us find out a new media rhetoric to face Muslim Brotherhood. Greetings, everybody. Dr. Ahmed Al-Moudi, Dr. Muhammad, Umula, it's my, ha having you with us, you've, uh, you've helped, you've illuminated us, you've given us a good idea about the Muslim Brotherhood today, today, we should not forget in, that there have been 37 this is the fourth anniversary of the death of the uh, Emirati 36 um, Merv, uh, UA soldiers were killed and they were uh, victims of Islam, Muslim Brotherhood. I'll, I'd like to ask you one qu question. That those Muslim Brotherhood uh, infiltrated our governments. So the, uh, they are, in other words, they are the decision makers in some countries and this is what happened in some uh, Arabic countries and I refrain and I repeat they have been revealed they they took off their mask and they used to use the 
legitimacy of the government. Now they have been exposed in Yemen. And what happened in the south of Yemen is thanks to the fact they have been exposed. How can we eliminate those people who pretend to be a legitimate member of the legitimate government? Today, today UAE has presented 34 um, martyrs in other words, there have been like 34 UAE families uh, uh, was betrayed by young UAE Muslim fighters in Yemen. UAE tried its best, tried to save and help Yemeni people and sent its soldiers to Yemen. And it was the lies in the war against the, uh, uh, the, the UAE had this kind of helping people in distress. UAE tried to help people to get to help people in distress, like in Yemen. The plan was to control Iraq, Yemen, and Syria, and the other countries will be the uh, uh, Morocco. And those those extremists and terrorists are there everywhere. UAE has presented martyrs. And they were expecting, through this operation, that the betrayal, the betrayal that took place in Yemen, it was the people who betrayed the us, and whoever funded the betrayals, and the people who gave them the planning and the locations of the UAE military camps in Yemen. And but the decision took place that the UAE will continue its support. To, ye to Yemeni people. Only honest people will continue the help and uh, help those people in distress in Yemen. Even if a great country If, the, if this, what happened to UAE happened to any other countries, like if I, we have a great country that had 37 of its m m soldiers killed in Yemen, it would have been withdrawn immediately. Now, how can we face them? It's very simple. We need to eliminate the financial resources. They cannot thrive without money. We need to expose them. You have found, you have a presence in Twitter so send messages to those brainwashed young people, even great countries. They detect all your Twitters, or your tweets. Whoever thinks that there is no, we we track down each and every tweet tweets that you guy you 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 make. The last question. Uh, thanks. Dr. Mohammed, the International uh, uh, Council for uh, Muslim Community, I would like to thank you for this presentation. I would like to thank you also for the information that you shared with us. And His Excellency Jamal, I would like to have more than one lecture, uh, uh, this kind of very valuable, uh, illuminating lecture. Uh, if you allow me, first, about Said Ramadan, Said Ramadan is the father of Tariq Ramadan and Hani Ramadan. Tariq Ramadan has cases in Europe. And I think that many cases that Muhammad presented is, uh, are projects that should be taken into consideration, Muslim Brotherhood and the money. We said that the issue of halal in, in Brazil. Brazil pays 14 billion only for the money, for, for the brand or the authorized, authorization of halal. So it works out like 200 million dollars is being paid to those to these companies that owned by Muslim Brotherhood. In France, 800 billion dollars is money paid from France to the Gulf countries. To those companies that authorize halal product food. The other aspect is the other resources that funds the Muslim Brotherhood is 
Al 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 Hajj, the pilgrimage uh, companies, the that we've got hundred thousands of visa that we companies generate the Muslim Brotherhood uh, companies generate when they organize the pilgrimage. The third point. We have to have a research about the Muslim Brotherhood and the sexual scandals. The first sexual scandals was in 64 between Hassan al Banna with one of the wo women in and the cause. Muhammad al Ghazali was expelled because he rejected any sexual scandal by Muslim Brotherhood. In my country, in my country, in Morocco, the scandal of the Ministry of um, Muslim Brotherhood, another scandal, um, another scandal from Muslim Brotherhood journalist had a sexual scandal. We should not talk about the freedom. I'm talking about that they, they presented to us and to every, everybody as a saint, as a, an angel, but they commit a horrendous act. So we'd like them to be held accountable and we'd like to prosecute them. The other aspect is Munich Mosque. Munich Mosque has a big story and uh, there is uh, an American writer. Munich Mosque, the founder of the Muslim Brotherhood. And that mosque is the, found, the, for, the foundation of Mus, Muslim Brotherhood. That, and also the preparators, the, 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 the people who committed 9-11 uh, 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 act also had their meeting in that the same mosque. I believe there are five groups that uh, intercontinental. Those five groups, they unite, they change for the sake of sustainability, Muslim Brotherhood, we cannot think that Hassan al Banna 21 found an international organization. I believe there is kind of conspiracy. I believe that Wulayat al Faqih, Hizb al Tahrir, Al Qaeda, and ISIS. This four group, five groups, they belong to the same mentality. The governance, they belong to the men mentality of uh, Sayyid Qutb, was belong to a Shia in, on, in his book. He criticized Uthman ibn Affan. He pr pr prophesied the socialism. He never prayed in, in, in Al Jum'ah. And here, I would like this topic is Muslim. The this brother Muslim Muslim Brotherhood had went through three stages. Now there is there are two three stages. The second stage. the presidential election in Egypt. Not Morsi. Who founded the Muslim? He is the one who founded the other Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood. When Jamal Abdel Nasser eliminated the uh, movement, but it was revived, it was brought again back to life thanks to somebody's efforts. Now we are at the third stage. This third stage is after the re redirecting the method or rectifying the revolution of the Egypt, of Egypt through the Muslim scholars unity and changing the movement or the changing gear from Egypt to Morocco. Now we are witnessing the new stage, the third stage to will the, the movement will take a new form, it will take a new shape. <clears throat> and those recruits have penetrated the media and the country in the Arabic world. Our fight with the Muslim Brotherhood is a is in is, is a um, ideological fight. We had only to win time because the fight is a long fight, and they can. They, we should. We shouldn't forget.
we should not forget that there is a stage when they recruit young people and they change new policies. Can we eliminate Muslim Brotherhood? No. But we can eliminate their impact because they are guerrillas and they need... Before I, before I conclude, I will allow me... Today there is a new news that Najil Yusuf Nada, the son of Nad Yusuf Nada, and the Omar Hand from Syria, those who was found the founder of Munich Mosque today, Saeed Bouteflika, in Tunis, his consultant today that was revealed that he was Lord Company Energy, which is which is they are manipulating the they are selling the oil uh, Algerian oil two sons of the uh, founders of uh, Muslim Brotherhood they are taking part in stealing the Algerian oil I told you it's a finance and it's a network and they steal the public money and they are corrupt let's be aware of the second stage let's let's alert our kids thank you very much At the end of our lecture, I would like to repeat uh, thanks uh, on behalf of Jan Vesoidi, the manager of the Emirates Center for Strategic Studies and Research. I would like to thank Mohamed Mullah and would like to our audience. And till we meet again, thank you very much and uh, good evening, everybody. <laughs> Bistro, bisinnikha.